most of us are, I mean, I believe most of us are not working today and you made the decision of being here with me to learn and to develop. And that's the real spirit of teaching of this ongoing process, uh, ongoing learning process. And this shows uh, how much you value uh, learning for the sake of learning. So I would love to hear in the chat box, to, to, to read in the chat box where you guys are from. So I'm going to be talking about myself in, in, in a while. So we have people from Bahia, Joinville, Santa Catarina, Rio Grande do Sul, Pernambuco, Mojiguaçu, São Paulo, Buenos Aires. Oh, my student. Hi, Julia. Rio, Goiânia. Lots of people from all over Brazil and all over Latin, Latin America. So that's, that's really, that's really, really nice. Sandra, hi, Sandra. Hello. So nice to have you here. Um, today, uh, as the title of my session uh, is on my slides, today we're going to be talking about, in my personal opinion, the four golden tips for using movies and TV series in class and to use them in class in a successful way uh, where our learners are going to feel comfortable with because uh, using uh, TV series and movies means that we are using authentic material. And whenever we use authentic material in class, uh, the, the level of challenge tends to be a bit higher uh, if we compare to uh, if we compare them with activities that we use from a course book or from a learning platform from a graded uh, background. Um, are you all familiar with the concept of authentic materials? Can you let me know here in the chat box? Let me take a look. Great, great. So for those who might not have uh, a clear uh, view of authentic material, are all the types of materials that we use in class that were not created uh, for pedagogical purposes. It goes from uh, videos, music or songs, video clips, TV series, movies, pretty much everything uh, audiovisual to um, realia, like a, a serial card box or um, full of used um, uh, meal card boxes uh, to, to, to teach students uh, or recipes that you get online, Instagram videos, TikTok videos. So this is all authentic material. Um, so let me tell you a little bit about me. Uh, in case you don't know me, my name is Eduardo. I'm from, uh, I am a teacher, a teacher educator, and uh, a materials writer. So I've been, I've been working in ELT for the past 11 years. I've been a teacher educator for the last five. And a materials writer for the last three years. <laughs> and I'm from Sao Paulo in Brazil. But for those of you who are from Sao Paulo, we know that that picture is not very accurate. So this is definitely a more accurate picture of uh, our city. Um, but during the pandemic, uh, as most of us were, I was really stressed out and I decided to change uh, completely uh, the, the path of my professional life. So I used to work for a very big um, and very renowned uh, language center here in Brazil. So basically I quit my job. I moved to Santos, which is where I'm living now. And I became a freelance uh, teacher, teacher educator and materials writer. I used to do all these things for uh, language centers. Um, 
now I do all these things uh, as a freelance professional. Uh, and what an upgrade, right? If you look at the picture from Sao Paulo and from where I'm living now, it's a big difference. <laughs> and uh, I do not regret any second uh, moving from uh, working uh, for a language center, uh, living in a big city, spending three hours in traffic every day to moving to the beach and becoming a freelancer. It's, I, I highly recommend uh, this, uh, this type of move as long as it's very well planned. Um, back to the topic. I would like to start off by saying, uh, by showing this quote from Jeremy Harmer, in which he says, the best activity in the world can be a waste of time if students don't know what it is they are supposed to do. So uh, sometimes we, uh, we are so worried about creating this amazing handout, this incredible activity, uh, and we spend hours and hours and hours doing all of these things. And then when we bring this to class, our students get lost either because our instructions were not effective or the lesson stages we offered for that activity uh, were not um, were not consistent or did not help our students to get to a meaningful outcome from that lesson. And that happens very frequently when we decide to, to bring movies and TV series uh, in class. So my first golden tip, I think the first one of all is including a pre-watching activity. Uh, why is, is this important? We have, to, we have to think that our, our students, they need a preparation before any listening exercise. And when we are thinking about watching uh, a video or a, a snippet of a TV series or a movie trailer, this is, after all, a listening exercise, right? So students should not be thrown at the listening exercise without any contextualization before. So, for instance, if you are going to play... Uh, we're very close to Halloween, so let's suppose you want to bring a video, a snippet from, um, I don't know, from the Twilight uh, movie with Kristen Stewart and Robert Pattinson about vampires. Um, you, before having them watch the video that you want them to, at this in this pre-watching stage, you could have, for example... Uh, you could work with vocabulary that students are not really familiar with from the video, or you could brainstorm. Like you could say, for you, you could just write the word in the middle of the board, like vampire, and brainstorm all the chunks and all the language that students know involving uh, th that are connected with the word vampire, and, and this is going to help them. Um, start thinking about the topic and also activate their schemata. So uh, this, this is a very uh, common jargon when we think about language acquisition. Um, uh, activating students' schemata is, space, is something like this. Imagine we have in our brain, it's full of tiny little boxes and we have uh, topics for these boxes. So when you bring a pre-watching activity, you are telling the brain of your students that you are going to need a very specific box. So if you're thinking about vampires, you're basically making a signal saying, hey, get the vampire box. And they go, they get the vampire box and they connect to all, um, uh, all the information that they know from that topic in, in L1, in their first language, and in L2 as well. So that's, that's the importance of including a pre-watching activity, activating students' schemata, and also working with uh, vocabulary that might be problematic during the watching stage. So this would be uh, my, my golden tip. Uh, let's not get confused. Uh, 
uh, uh, let's not confuse a prayer watching activity with a warm up. It's different. I see that somebody is talking about warm ups uh, in the chat box. They are different things. The warm up, uh, the objective of a warm up is normally a game or a playful activity at the beginning of the lesson to set the mood for uh, the English speaking environment but it does not necessarily have to lead students to the topic of the lesson. And the pre-washing activity is already in this contextualization moment. So these are different things. Um, my second golden tip would be including a listening for gist activity. Uh, when we listen to things, we listen to, to things from, With, with different purposes, right? So uh, for the teachers who have already taken courses uh, with me, I always like to give this example. Imagine your home, it's Wednesday night, just arrived from work and you're cooking dinner and you turn the TV on because you like the soap opera that is playing at the moment. Uh, you are, the way you are listening Uh, to this uh, is very superficial. So you're just listening to the soap opera in the background, getting a general idea of what's happening. So this is what we call listening for gist. It's a listening for general idea. Uh, and this helps the students understand what's happening in the scene. So if you think about uh, 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 a snippet, a practical example in which we're going to use the Twilight Saga, as I specified before, uh, questions like, um, uh, what is happening in the scene? Or uh, have they decided uh, to do the same thing? Or any, uh, I mean, any, any exercise that is going to force them to understand the general idea. So, Uh, you could also have students uh, looking at this, uh, like print screens of the scene and have them predict what's going to happen in that scene. And then you play the video and they compare what they have predict, what they have predicted in groups with what actually happened. Um, you can have them watch the scene and write a quick summary of what happened on their notebooks or if you're teaching online in the chat box or on a gym board or on Quizlet or I mean, many, many, we have many options out there. Um, so this would be my second uh, golden tip. My third golden tip would be including a listening for detail activity. Um, let's go back to the example of cooking on Wednesday night. Remember I told you about this? So um, we're cooking on Wednesday night, the TV is playing, you are listening to the soap opera for just, and then bang, you hear the breaking news song. So for those who are in Brazil, the breaking news is something like, da, 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 da. I don't know you, but when I listen to the breaking news song and I'm watching TV, lots of questions pop up uh, uh, on my mind. So, uh, and, and I think that this happens to, to a lot of people, right? So the first question that comes to my mind is like, oh, who, who's, who's died or, or whatever, what happened to, to someone, some, someone died or something has been destroyed or exploded or an airplane accident or something like this. So I have all these questions in my mind of like, what happened? When did it happen? Where? Why? How many people died? Um, the way I'm listening changes completely because before I was listening to the soap opera just to get the general idea. Now I'm listening to the news report to get a to get very specific information to answer those questions that I have. Can you see the difference from, from, um, from listening to the soap opera and listening to the news report? It, is, is it clear? Yes? Thank you for everybody who's interacting in the chat box. I love 
uh, this interaction. Um, so the same way that we, we have these strategies to listen to things in different ways in Portuguese or in Spanish or in whatever first language uh, you might speak, uh, the same skills need to be developed uh, in English. Because uh, we don't actually teach listening. We help students develop listening skills, which is different from grammar and vocabulary. These are things we can teach. But skills, we, we really don't teach them. We, we, we can teach them strategies so they can develop their own skills. Um, and the same happens here with listening for detail, which is something more specific. Uh, for those of you who use course books, uh, true or false activities are listening for details. Um, questions about dates and events and actions and names and places or any other type of specific information is a listening for detail exercise. Um, if you are think, if you're listening, uh, if you're thinking again, still thinking about the Twilight example, uh, you could have students build a timeline of events according to what uh, to what happened in the in the video. So they watch the video and then they create a timeline of everything that happened. Or you can give them flashcards with things that happened. Uh, throughout the video and have them put this in order. So this is um, a listening for detail activity. And my fourth golden tip would be including a post-watching activity uh, as well. So uh, when we think about... Uh, when we think about, when we look at the lesson, we, we have worked with contextualization, which is the pre-watching uh, stage. We have worked with a listening for gist. We have worked with listening for detail. Now, this post-watching activity is going to give students the chance to react to the content in a personalized way. Um, uh, so for, let's, again, let, let, let me use the Twilight example. I don't know, I don't even like Twilight. I don't know why, me, why I'm using <laughs> this movie as an example. If you like Twilight, I'm sorry. Uh, I didn't mean to offend, but I, I, I'm not even familiar with the movie that much it's because there are vampires and all the Halloween mood. Um, uh, so let's suppose that there is uh, a scene uh, where Edward, the vampire, left uh, the girl. Her name is Bella, I think. Uh, he left her and she's feeling depressed. So what you can do is uh, this. imagine that this is the scene that students watched. So contextualization, listening for chess, listening for detail, and the follow-up, number four would be a uh, post-watching activity, would be like, write a letter to Bella uh, to, to cheer her up, or questions like, if you uh, were left by the, person you, uh, by the person you love, how would you feel, how would you react? Um, or uh, what's your opinion of the way Bella is reacting to Edward's uh, decision uh, to live? So it's always about what are you, uh, uh, what's in your mind, what do you think? So giving students the chance to react to what they've watched in a personalized way. Um, and it's very interesting to see that the, being this, the last stage of the lesson, sometimes we get lost with time, right? Because time management, let's be honest, uh, it's something that we struggle. If you teach online, if you teach face-to-face, -face, if you teach kids, teens, adults, if you teach dogs, cats, dinosaurs, vampires, it doesn't matter who you teach or where you teach, 
time management sometimes flies off the handle. Um, and what what normally happens is teachers live this last uh, post watching moment uh, aside because they don't have enough time, so they just ignore this part. And this is very sad because this is where co real communication is going to happen, where students are going to finally have the chance to speak, to share, to speak their mind about what they've watched. So if you if if throughout the course of your lesson, you see that you're not gonna have time and you have to make decisions in order to prioritize one activity over the other, always prioritize the post-watching activity uh, because we need to have this full circle of pre, while, and post. Um, there is a very interesting question from Fernando on the chat box. I'm going to address that in a while. Um, let's see how this works uh, in practice. So I brought here an example. This is uh, one of the worksheets, one of the Halloween worksheets that I am going to be sharing on my newsletter on Monday. So if you are on my newsletter uh, on Telegram, you're going to receive uh, six, six video lessons for Halloween for different levels. So in these lessons, they follow exactly the same structure. If you're not in my Telegram uh, newsletter channel, I'm going to tell you how you can get there to get this uh, lesson plans towards the end of the session. So hang in there. Um, look at this. Uh, look at this example. This is a B1 lesson uh, where I used a snippet of the Big Bang Theory. Do we have the Big Bang Theory fans here? Let me see if anybody speaks up in the chat box. Yeah, wow. Hijan is very passionate about them. <laughs> Someone said Bazinga. Yeah, it's amazing. The Big Bang Theory is one of my favorite series as well. Uh, look at the first exercise. Uh, it says, complete the sentences A to E using the words and expressions below. So these expressions I got from the video, and I thought that they might be a bit complicated for my learners. So this also worked as a pre-watching uh, 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 exercise. And then I would... What, what I also did is I looked at I looked at this word. It said heart condition, trick or treat. It said how um, how do they connect together? Like, and students were like, oh, you cannot uh, play tricks on people with heart conditions. So, and then we start developing the discussion. Said, hey, and what if you do that? What what might happen? You know. Uh, and this is directly connected to what is going to happen in the Big Bang Theory. Uh, so this is the pre-watching stage. Look at the listening for gist. Look at the picture and discuss in Paris what Sheldon is trying to do. Watch the video and answer the question below. Is Sheldon's plan successful? So this is a Halloween episode where Sheldon is trying to play tricks on people. I don't know what season, um, but uh, uh, he's trying to play tricks on people for Halloween. He wants to give them uh, uh, electric shock on the hand. Um, and this is what's happening in this, uh, in this scene. So students have to watch and decide if his plans if his plan was successful. See, it's a listening for gist. It's very broad, very open. I'm not talking about anything specific. I just want to know if his plan worked. That's all I want to know. Now, after number two, we're going to go for number three, which is going to be all those, uh, all those questions from A to G, as you can see from 
the end of the first column to the beginning of the second one, which is a multiple uh, choice exercise. And it goes like, how did Sheldon answer Leonard's first question? So see how, how much more detailed these questions are. So we have the other question that says, what, why didn't Leonard leave the apartment? Or how does Sheldon try to help Leonard? So these questions are much more specific when we compare them to the listening for gist. So this signals that it's a listening for detail. Then, finally, we have uh, the post-watching activity, which is scan the QR code and check 31 ideas for Halloween pranks in Paris. Talk about them and decide which ones you would do and which ones are just too cruel. So uh, this, is a, this is a BuzzFeed article with 31 ideas for Halloween pranks. So this is the moment where they're going to be in pairs or in smaller groups, checking uh, the article together. Um, so, so, they, so they can decide and discuss about Halloween pranks again, talking about their opinion. Um, some people might be concerned about the level of the Big Bang Theory, the language level, but since this is, I would not recommend you use the Big Bang Theory with A1 and A2 students. I mean, I even would, but it depends on the, the, the snippet of the, the exercise and the difficulty level of the task. Uh, so this activity is highly, is, is, very appropriate for a B1 level. So you can use this without any problems. So I've used this with B1 levels and other teachers and, and I mean, that's fine. You can, you can use that because remember the secret of authentic materials is not being so concerned about the level of the material, but being concerned about the level of the activities. So that's, that's the trick, that's the secret about uh, authentic materials. But then this is a conversation for another session. We, we, we could have a whole webinar only talking about using authentic materials and then we would go a bit uh, deeper into this concept. Now I have some bonus tips here. Um, this framework that I've shown you with a pre, while in post, uh, it's a framework for a whole lesson. Uh, and what does that mean? That means that we are going to have this four activities in the course of one hour, one hour and 15, it depends on how long your lessons are. Um, considering that, we are not going to show the whole movie. Uh, because that's not the objective here, right? So we are going to choose. We're going to use uh, a short snippet, five minutes maximum, because students are going to have to watch this snippet twice. They're going to watch the first time for just watch again for the listening for detail, and you have the pre-watching and the post-watching. So if you're thinking about a one-hour lesson. Uh, uh, using a whole movie or a longer segment uh, is not beneficial uh, neither to students nor to you because, I mean, we, we have to think about the learning outcomes of that lesson and especially and only bring students to the class to play a whole movie. That's not teaching, right? So... Uh, we we all recommend student we all recommend our students to watch movies in English so they can be um, uh, in contact with the language. But we know that watching movies for the sake of watching movies without any guided uh, or conscious learning strategy does not does not promote any language learning. You know, because people are going to, because there are different ways, again, 
that you're going to watch a movie, right? So if students are watching the movie on a Friday night or, you know, laying in their sofa, talking to friends, I mean, they're not concerned about learning the language, you know? Uh, so it's it's different. And then after using the, the snippets of the movie uh, in the class, you can recommend them to watch the whole movie at home or the whole series episode, but not bringing the whole thing to class. Uh, the second one is you have to pick the right video for the right audience. Uh, so think about what your students are going to be interested in and what it is that they would like to have in class. Because when we bring authentic materials, it's like we are bringing uh, a part of their uh, reality to the classroom, right? So we are... Uh, we are bringing something that motivates them. Yeah? So this is a chance for us to do that. So that's why we have to be very mindful here selecting the movies and the videos to use in our lessons. Um, also, you, can, you, you need to have a very clear aim for the video activity. This structure that I told you, we are not talking about teaching grammar. We are not talking about teaching vocabulary through the video. We are talking about developing listening skills. There are many different ways we can use videos in class. But again, I would spend a long time here with you to go over all the possibilities of using uh, videos in class. But we can definitely use videos for grammar, uh, for grammatical purposes, for lexical, which is vocabulary purposes. Um, uh, we can uh, use videos for writing lessons, for reading lessons, for speaking lessons. So it's like, I'll, there's a lot, that there are a lot of options. Um, so, I mean, <laughs> We could stay hours here. Uh, Fernando is saying that they should not be longer than 10 minutes. And I think 10 minutes is too long already. I think they shouldn't be longer than seven minutes or even five minutes. Yeah? So I would cut it in half, definitely. Um, then my last... Uh, my last recommendation, uh, my last bonus uh, uh, um, tip would be asking students to compare their answers before you correct uh, the exercises. Because we know that listening uh, tends to be challenging, more challenging than other skills. So that's a fact. And listening uh, with authentic material tends to be even more challenging. So sometimes students might not feel very confident about what they have written or not so sure about the answers they've uh, selected. So it's important to have a moment right after the answer, the exercise, ask them to compare answers in pairs or trios so they can uh, share ideas like, oh, what was your answer for number one? Oh, it was this. Be why? Oh, because of this, this, and this. And they share their experiences based on what they heard or what they, they realized or what, they, what kind of language they could pick up from the video. This is really important. Uh, it's going to help them discuss the listening process in a more um, prescriptive way. And also... Uh, you, uh, it's going to give them, it's, you're going to make them feel a little bit more um, confident about sharing their answers. Now, if you're teaching one-to-one, -one, if you're teaching privately and you have one-to-one uh, -one classes, um, an interesting strategy that you can uh, build with your student is to have them select the correct answer and take notes and have and have them take notes of which part of the video made them choose that specific answer. So the selection process of the answers is conscious. 
Yeah, like oh, I chose letter A because there was a part of the video where uh, the vampire said this or the monster said that. Yeah, uh, so they are able to justify their answers. So this is one of the things. Um, uh, and make this student feel comfortable, and not only individual students, but groups as well, uh, that it's okay uh, not uh, to answer all uh, the questions. It's okay not to understand. It's part of the process. Yeah? So make them very comfortable um, about this. Um, also, I've prepared a summary of everything that I have told you here in this session today. So the stages and the types of activities and the extra tips. Uh, and I've also prepared uh, uh, a bonus lesson, a free lesson using a video uh, for you guys to download. This is going to be available on my Telegram channel group. So this is the QR code here in the screen. So uh, use uh, your phone to scan this QR code, or I'm also going to share the link to the channel here in the chat box. So you can access this link using your phone and join the Telegram channel. As soon as uh, uh, we finish here today, I'm going to be posting this file there um, for you uh, to download, okay? And on Monday, uh, I'm going to, uh, we're going to have, actually, I planned a whole week of uh, Halloween tips for, uh, for lessons, very practical tips for uh, your lessons. And on Monday, I'm going to be uh, posting the, the Halloween lessons, the six lesson plans for different levels using videos. So you're going to be able to download both the lesson plans and the video snippets. So I've got everything already organized for you, okay? But the only way for you to get this is through the Telegram uh, channel using, again, this QR code or the link that I sent in the chat box again. I sent it again. So um, you can uh, join me there, okay? Um, we have some time for questions. I would love uh, uh, to hear what you guys have to say or I mean, if there is anything else I can help you with. So you can um, uh, let's see, I have here a, um, a question from uh, from Andrea. Okay, so Andrea is saying, could you elaborate on the level of the activities is more important than the language or the scenes themselves? Or did I misunderstand it? Um, not necessarily the scenes, um, Andrea. Uh, what I'm saying is you can get a Big Bang Theory snippet where the language level of that scene is higher than what your students can cope with, but you can create a listening comprehension exercise that is going to be, um, there is going to be appropriate for that level. So you could be using, um, like uh, uh, as some, someone said about the Big Bang Theory, uh, th there might be an episode, I don't know, uh, where people are introducing themselves or uh, people are uh, sharing who they are. And this, uh, this type of language is very common in basic uh, levels. So you could use the Big Bang Theory for basic students. It's only a matter of uh, preparing the correct activity for the video. Yeah, And, uh, this, is, and this is the biggest magic uh, the, in the, I think the biggest trick as well in when we talk about using authentic material, because we we teachers we are frequently looking for videos that are going to match our students' levels. So we're gonna 
We're going to look online for videos that are going to, that my A1 students are going to be able to understand everything. And when we think about authentic materials, that's going to be hard to find. So they don't need to understand everything in the video. They need to be able to do the exercise that you ask them to. So that's what I, that's what I mean. I hope my, uh, I hope my, my, my answer was satisfactory. Um, what platform do I use to teach? Um, I use, I normally use Zoom uh, and I use this because I teach 100% online today. So I normally use Zoom, but I have to confess that I am using, I, I am flirting with uh, Google uh, Hangout. Hangouts, no, it's Google Meet now. I really, I really liked the way the platform is working now. Um, uh, I think, uh, I think, this will be posted on face on on, on the Facebook uh, page, but also on YouTube. But I think the people from Giselle can uh, can help me answer that uh, later on. But I think it's going to be made available. Yeah. Um, Julia asked me for, uh, is, if, if it's, is there a better, uh, material for A1 and A2 students? Um, uh, the choice of course books is very personal. Um, uh, I, I do think that we, we need to strike a balance, you know, uh, between using uh, course books and bringing authentic materials uh, uh, in order to 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 help our students achieve their aims. So, is there uh, is there the perfect uh, course book out there? The question is not. I think that's not the question. The question is, what is the best course book uh, for my students, which course book do we have in the market that is going to best attend to my students' needs? I think that's going to guide you through um, through the process. Sibeli uh, asked me, how often do you suggest using this type of activities? Um, there isn't a frequency, really. You could have um, listening activities every unit uh, listening lessons every unit uh, in the book. So if if you are going to finish a unit, you could have a video activity uh, to summarize everything that happened in that unit. This would be an interesting idea. Yeah? Uh, this is what Cambridge Evolve does. And this is one uh, of the course books that I really, really like uh, because it's highly adaptable. So the name is again is Cambridge Evolve. So if you want to read, if you want to find out more about this uh, this uh, book collection, they are available at Gisau's website, uh, and I highly recommend this if you if you want because it's very adaptable and you can personalize the lessons for different levels. Um, Louise, yes, this webinar is being recorded. And it's gonna be available. It's gonna be made available later uh, this month, and also uh, she's always going to be sending you certificates. Um, so to wrap up, I would like to thank you very much for being here uh, with me today in this uh, session. Uh, this is my Telegram ID. Uh, this is my Instagram handle, so Edu de Freitas ELT, and this is my email. Uh, reach out to me. I would love to connect with you. Uh, so if you have the chance uh, to follow me on Instagram, I, I'm always posting useful tips and activities and reflections about teaching, and I would love uh, to connect uh, with you there. So again, thank you very much for being here with me on Teacher's Day. This was very, very important. Thank you very much for, uh, thank, you, thank you very much, Tizal, for inviting me 
to be speaking on such uh, such a meaningful day for all of us here. And I do hope that you celebrate Teacher's Day today. So if, if, you, if, if it's safe for you to go out, go to a nice restaurant, have a nice dinner. If it's not safe, stay home. Order something that you like to eat because we teachers, we work really hard and this day needs to be celebrated. We need to celebrate our uh, journey. We need to celebrate our uh, story. So don't, 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 don't let this day go by as any other. This is Teacher's Day and we are proud teachers and we have to celebrate. Thank you very much, everybody, for being here. I'm looking forward to hearing from you. Thank you very much. Kisses. Bye.